Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Unity of Greater Hartford. Good morning, good morning, yay. My name is Reverend Christine Boylan, and it is great to see all of you. Happy almost Thanksgiving, right? A few days. Uh, we're glad to see everyone here in the sanctuary, and of course, all of you on Facebook and on our website. Uh, and with me today is our music director, Carolyn Fisher. Welcome back. We missed you last week. Um, also, our worship assistant, Deborah Wilson, and our live stream team, Marty Espinola, uh, Angela Simidon, and Tony Bensko. And thank you to our greeters, um, Maria, and who else was our greeter? And you, Lois. <laughs> I saw. I thought I saw somebody else out there too. Okay, so Lois and and uh, Maria, thank you for being our greeters this morning. Um, our coffee baristas. Uh, we we had a bunch of people jump in, and uh, that was um, uh, Christine Kylie and Wendy Billings and and Marty. Uh, all all helped put that together, and our chair pra uh, chaplains. And we have. Jolene, do we have another prayer chaplain? Yeah. Ah, Wendy, hello, Wendy. Uh, so Wendy and Jolene are our prayer chaplains today. And of course, you know that we're live streaming. Angela is on the camera this morning. But please don't let that affect your experience in the sanctuary. Hoop and holler and clap your hands and stomp your feet and call out to me, whatever, whatever. Now get up and move around the cabin. Um, all of that is fine. Um, right now, we are not allowing singing in our sanctuary, except by our music director, uh, Carolyn. Um, when you came in, you probably were handed a Sunday uh, a bulletin, a one piece of paper. Uh, if you did get that, great. Uh, please don't leave that in the sanctuary. When you leave, play, make sure that that leaves along with you. Um, and if you're watching online, that Sunday bulletin is available on our website unityhartford.org. All you need to do is just go up and um, right underneath all the information about Sunday, you'll see click here for the Sunday Bulletin and, and that's where you'll find everything. So you'll, you'll be able to follow along. Um, so on that bulletin is our welcome affirmation statement. So I'm going to ask all of you to join with me in making our, our welcome loud and welcoming. Okay, so let's do that together. Together. Unity is a positive path for spiritual living. And yes, it is. And here at Unity, we welcome, value, and include all people. So again, welcome to all of you this morning, um, those in the sanctuary, that, as well as those watching on our website. And if you're watching on Facebook, now you have a job to do. You've got a job. Your job, if you're watching on Facebook, is to let yourself be known. Say, hello, I'm here, and then welcome anyone else, you know, to, to Facebook, and every now and then send up an emoji so I, I get to smile when I go back and watch it. Uh, <laughs> yes, Deborah, it's all about me. <laughs> uh, so... Um, so I, there, I, I don't believe there's anyone here in the sanctuary for the first time, but there might be somebody watching online for the first time. And if, this, if you're with us online for the first time, or perhaps you're, you've just been watching a couple times, and you are now interested in finding out more about Unity, well, we would be thrilled to send you information. All you need to do is to send us an email. Send it to um, office MGR at unityhartford.org. Tony, our office manager, will, uh, re uh, will then send you, of course, you've got to make sure you give us your address, uh, but she will put in the mail an information package about this Unity Center and the Unity Movement as a whole. Uh, and we would be delighted to answer any questions you might have. Just, just let us know. Um, and also, if um, you want to know what's happening, what's going on, especially as we get into um, Christmas season, which starts next Sunday, hard to believe, but as we get into that, um, you're going to want to know what's going on. So make sure that you're on the, you get the, uh, the weekly newsletter. In the atrium, 
<coughs> on the table to the right, there's a blue form. Just fill that out and put it through the mail slot uh, in my office door. Uh, if you're online and you want to get that, then please just send uh, an email to officemgr at unityhartford.org and she'll get you on the, on the newsletter list. Um, now today is the Sunday in our Spiritual Economics Sunday series. Um, and I, I hope you've uh, found it, uh, um, if not enjoyable, at least enlightening. Uh, I mean, I certainly have. Uh, and later today, we're going to have the opportunity to graduate and receive a diploma. And then after the service, you can join us in the community room for some graduation cake. Um, and if you, if you cannot join us in person uh, today, you'll, well, you'll have to do without the cake. I can't do anything about that. But I can email you a diploma. And so if you'd like to receive that diploma, uh, even though you're not here in the sanctuary, just send me an email, revchris at unityhartford.org. Okay, I think that's all I have. And so we're going to uh, take this moment to pray. Okay, so let's do that. And so this morning we pray. We pray affirming that divine justice is at work in our lives and in our world. We open our hearts and our minds to the divine working within us. And as we do, we become aware, we become receptive to divine justice working in, through, and as us and all people. We become aware through our power of faith that there is only one power in the universe, God the good. We become aware of our power of love. And as we seek to be the very expression of the divine, as justice, as faith, And we take a moment to just feel that in ourselves right now. To feel divine justice within us, for we are always connected to the divine. To feel the strength of our faith and feel the depth of our love. And we're just going to take a moment in the silence. And so, despite any appearance to the contrary, despite what may be happening in this physical realm, we know that God is in it. We affirm that, we pray that, we know that. And we know that we are the very expressions of the divine. And so we bring our faith and our love into everything everything we do, including our reactions. We bring our faith and our love to all that we feel, all that we think. We own any emotion, but when we put ourselves in the world, we show up as divine love, divine faith, and divine justice. And with our prayers, we put our arms, our hands, our legs, our feet to our prayers. We are God in expression, in action. And for that, for that knowing, 
for that realization deep within us and in our expression, we say thank you. Thank you, sweet spirit. And so it is. Ah, deep breath. I've heard for, from several people this week of how upsetting some of the news has been. So we just take a moment and always bless yourself with faith and love. So now, I, yes, I'm going to turn it over to the irrepressible <laughs> Deborah Wilson. <laughs> Dean, thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I have a suggestion for Rev. Christine. I think she needs to put together a prayer book. She is the best prayer in the world. She really is. Well, happy, glory-filled, and rapidly approaching holiday Sunday to you. <laughs> As Rev. Christine said, my name is Deborah Wilson, and it's my exquisite pleasure to share some announcements with you. Not only Thanksgiving Day, or what I call a gratitude go gobbler day, <laughs> but we have Christmas rapidly approaching. <laughs> Are you ready? Do you have all your shopping done? Neither do I. <laughs> but let's get our inner Christmas elf ready to jump in and participate with some wonderful opportunities that are coming our way. And we can do this through Unity of Greater Hartford, so let me share these with you. We will be bringing our blessings to two fantastic organizations. You know, one of these organizations reminds us how uh, blessed we are in that Hartford Interval House, if you're not familiar with it, is for battered women. And many times they're in a situation where they just have to leave everything and go there for shelter. So thank goodness we have an organization like this. And this is going to be one of the organizations we are supporting, as well as MAC, the Manchester Area Conference for Churches. And you'll see an information flyer that's in the sanctuary, and that information's also in the newsletter and on our website. So how do we want to support them? We have a goal, which can always go over, but we'd like to get at least 79 gift cards for the Interval House, those guests that are staying there. And, you know, we don't think about this. If you need to leave instantly, then you have nothing. You don't have any personal items, no toiletries, nothing at all. So these gift cards will go to support them, uh, the residents there, and then also the children that they may have had to bring with them. And if you can, we're suggesting $20 gift cards, and feel free to donate as many as you'd like. As far as Manchester Area Conference for Churches, we will be blessing bags, put, put together blessing bags, so for the local seniors, and we're shooting for a goal of 33. Again, feel free to go over that. And in addition to $5 gift cards, we're looking for sort of gender neutral personal care items. And there's lots of ideas on the flyer. If you say, well, what would that be? The flyer will help you with that. And if that's not enough, we have more. Our deadline to receive these donations, if you could get them completed by December 5th. So please purchase and bring those gift cards and other items as soon as you can. There are boxes for those gift cards and a bin for the blessing bag items all in the atrium. And we also want to get you all excited to help Rev. Christine and decorate our church. So there's several dates and times that you can sign up. One of those will be next Wednesday, November 24th, if you can come from 1 to 6, and or next Sunday, November 28th, after the service. There's also a sign-up sheet in the atrium, or you can email Tony and as Rev. Christine shared, it's officemgr at unityhartford.org. Do we have any, raise your hand if you are a bookworm. You like to read, buy, or share books. Yes. So you could either receive some books for free, or you could get the Seeds of Spirit bookstore ready that will be opening soon. And you can also give some donations to the bookstore. So if you'd like to be part of this transformation, you can do it in several ways. You can donate, but when you donate, it needs to be like a book that has a spiritual theme or the CDs as well. So it's not like any books, but something that has that spiritual nature. And you can bring them with you either on Wednesday evenings or Sunday mornings. 
And the second option is to work with the board members to organize that library so they can reach that target date of December 5th. There's a sign up sheet in the atrium for two dates, Wednesday, December 1st from three to six and or Saturday, December 4th from 10 to noon so they can hit that target date. So please plan to be there for the December 5th opening date so we can welcome people and it feels good to be doing some things where we're not constrained by the virus, doesn't it? Like masks off for a while. I'm triple boosted, right? So as we get ready for Thanksgiving, please join us tomorrow, the 22nd of November, it's hard to believe it's almost gone, at 7 p.m. There's gonna be a very special happening at Temple Beth Hillel, 20 Baker Lane in South Windsor. And this is a chance for, they will require masks at the synagogue, but it is a chance, it's an annual event where there'll be inspirational readings and there'll be comments, there'll be music, there'll be songs uh, from Temple Beth Hillel's rabbis, as well as some of our area clergy. And of course, Reverend Christine will be participating as well. So come join and you can find information online or one more time. There's flyers in the atrium. Wait, there's more. <laughs> Next Sunday is the beginning of Advent, and we will be celebrating the gifts of faith, peace, love, and joy. I'd like to spread that to the four corners of the world. And while I know you will want to be present for all of these Sundays, please mark two in particular as well, December 5th and December 12th. The Unity Band will be in the house for Christmas carols. Yes, December 5th, right? Yes? I think you'll be there, right? <laughs> She's going to be shaking the rafters and shaking the shingles. <laughs> and on December 12th, there'll be the music uh, trio of Mad Agnes. She'll be here in the house creating a wonderful musical Sunday for us. So please come on in or join online. You don't want to miss that. So we're going to have greeting time in just a moment, but we really want everybody to be comfortable with how we do this. So let me go over a couple guidelines so nobody feels infringed upon and you have the option to greet people in the way that they would like. So we invite you to leave your seat if you're comfortable to do that to welcome people. You can either do the fist bump or the elbow tag or if somebody gives you the signal that you can come on in for a hug. So just watch for the cue. But before we start, let me just make sure we're all comfortable with how we'll approach this. No one's going to come to the camera person, Angela. She's valuable goods here, like we all are, but we have to keep her still working. Um, and, and certainly not to Reverend, or excuse me, to our musician, Carolyn, or anyone on the platform unless we come down to see you. And if you don't want to participate, if you're just going, I'm still not there, it's okay. Just remain in your seat. For those that are up, you know, don't go into someone's space if they're seated, but that means we don't want you to leave them out, so you can either, you know, give them a, the heart gesture or wave so that there's still an inclusion. For everyone else, you know, just honor the person you are greeting. Ask before you hug, as someone, you know, might be more comfortable with just greeting you in a different way. So Carolyn is going to start playing some music as we greet each other. And then when I ask you to take your seats, we're probably gonna be so excited to get close to each other and greet, we might not wanna stop. But at some point, I'll invite you to come on back to your seats so we can continue with the service. So, Miss Carolyn, if we could have a little greeting music, and then folks, you can get up if you are comfortable with that and let people know how you would like to be greeted, okay?
getting to greet our fellow human beings without some masks on, it's a wonderful thing. May the virus stay at bay. Go away. Holy Spirit. So it is. Amen. Amen. Carolyn, I think we are ready for our opening song. And what will that be today? Do tell. What will that opening song be today? Yeah. <laughs> At some point, there we go, hello! I love technology, it's just, it's, you know, it's like having an extra limb, you gotta like really think about it. Anyways, good morning. We're gonna start off this morning um, with Bright Side of the Road. Mm From the dark end of the street To the bright side of the road We'll be lovers once again On the bright side of the road Sorry Little darling, come with me Help me share my load From the dark end of the street To the bright side of the road And to this life we're born Baby, sometimes Sometimes we don't know why Time seems to go by so fast In the twinkling of an eye Let's enjoy it while we can Help me share my load From the dark end of the street To the bright side of the road Everyone is going to have to watch that replay. We got some holy rollers in here. <laughs> Thank you, Carolyn. That was great. <laughs> so I would invite you to please join me as we say our statement of faith. Together, please. There is only one presence and one power, active as a universe and as my life. God, the good omnipotence. Amen. So I'd like to share the daily word, which today is grace. Grace is my constant blessing. I discover grace all around me when I open my eyes, my mind, and my heart to its presence. Grace reminds me that God's love is active everywhere and at every moment. Grace can be as quiet as a whisper. It's in the love I hear in the voice of someone dear and in the warmth and tenderness of a comforting touch. Grace is the heartfelt welcome I receive when invited into a friend's home. It's the bliss I feel when I know I truly belong. God is the heart of all grace as goodness and kindness in action, always mine to receive and give in kind. My growing awareness inspires me to share this activity of God generously by calling it into expression. And now I commend you to God and to the message of his grace, a message that is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all who are sanctified. Acts 20, 32. Again, today's word is grace. Grace is my constant blessing, and so it is. Amen. And now for some wonderful words from our Reverend Christine. <laughs> Anybody thinking of themselves as an incurable giver these days? I love how Reverend Butterworth talks 
and encourage us, us to be an incurable giver. Ah, wouldn't that be great if that was the pandemic? Yeah. <laughs> we were all suffering from that being incurable givers. Well, we can. We can do that. And we're, I'm going to give you the opportunity to do that. And so we have been, you know, uh, talking about uh, every Sunday for the last two years almost the tangible and intangible aspects of giving. And so the, the tangible aspect of giving, of course, is giving of your fi finances, giving of your financial resources, and giving that... Uh, your giving of your financial resources to that which feeds your soul, to that which inspires you to rise up higher. And that certainly, uh, for many of us, are the unity teachings. And so we give from our love of unity teachings and how they empower us and help us to have an ease of grace and love, peace, and security. And so I encourage you to um, uh, give either online, which is through the donate button on our website, unityhartford.org, and that's where you would give credit cards. If you're here in the sanctuary, there's a giving box in the atrium, and you can give your checks and cash through there. And of course, you can mail in a check if you desire. And so uh, we are certainly grateful for all those tangible gifts that keep the lights on and keep the doors open. Uh, and we are also grateful for in, intangible gifts, that gift of the heart. Um, and so please hold that gift, both gifts, in your heart as we say our, uh, our offering blessing. And of course that, you know, just come up with one word. It could be love, it could be peace, it could be justice, it could be grace, whatever it is. That's your gift that you're giving to back out to all of us. So holding those both in our hearts, let's say our offering blessing together. Join me together. Divine love flowing as me blesses and multiplies all that I am and have, all that I give and receive, and so it is. Amen. So thank you. So here we are. I may just have to get my stuff out. <laughs> well, I have to say congratulations to all of you. Yeah, we did it. With today's talk, we will have explored all 12 chapters in Reverend Eric Butterworth's book, Spiritual Economics. Yes. So let's give ourselves some applause here. Yeah. Now, of course, not everyone was here or viewed every single Sunday. Uh, and even if they did, uh, they might not have been able to absorb it all. Does that mean you didn't do it correctly or perfectly? No. It means you took in what you could, what you were able to, on this go-around, knowing that there's going to be many more go-arounds. <laughs> okay. I mean, for me, this is the fourth time that I've read the book. And I was stunned to read parts that I didn't remember reading at all before. Ever done that? Yeah, you go, what's this here? Is this a different printing? Um, and also to still be able to have those glorious aha moments. Ugh. I love the aha moments. Anyone else? Anyone else love aha moments? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the best. So during the, the service today, we're going to take some time and to give you a diploma. Actually, two board members will be doing that, our board president, Lee, and our board member, Wendy. Um, and if you're not in the sanctuary, you can, as I said earlier, you can still get a diploma. Just send me the email. Uh, so, but before we do that, let's do two things. We're going to take a slight review of what we talked about last week, and then we're going to see what chapter 12, which is a new world vision, what chapter 12 has in store for us. Well, last week in chapter 10, 
the author Eric Butterworth wrote that we are to live our lives from the inside out. And when we catch that truth, we can then begin to understand that giving is an attitude, not an action. Our purpose in life is not acquisition or getting, but really about growing in our perception of our own divinity. He reminded us that life is a growing, unfolding experience. Life is a giving process. And when you truly understand that, you then discover the wonder of giving. You become an incurable giver. And while that's certainly nice, you know, to go around saying, I'm an incurable giver, uh, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> but more importantly, it is critical to know that about yourself as you continue your studies of spiritual economics because it is the most important key to this prosperity law. It's all about the law of giving and receiving, a law which is unfailing. If you give, and by if you give by that, I mean if you are really live in a giving consciousness, See, it's the attitude. If you really live in a giving consciousness, then you must receive. And if there is a lack of any type in your life, something that's blocking the flow, the most effective remedy to unblock the flow is to give. And if something's got to give, that something is you. You are the one who needs to give. Let it be you. We also discussed tithing, and I certainly agreed with Reverend Butterworth that it is an excellent practice of disciplined giving. When done, in joy and love, not an obligation or fear. There's no magic, no miracles to tithing. Rather, it is a tool similar to denials and affirmations. And just like denials and affirmations, tithing as a tool helps us to truly come to know that God is our one source of all. Yeah, it takes us to that realization. The law of giving and receiving requires that your left hand not know what your right hand is doing. Tithing is a tool to assist you in growing your giving attitude. It confronts you with your own motivation. Are you giving to get or are you giving to grow? So your homework was to give, give, give. <laughs> to strive to become an incurable giver an incurable giver of your finances, your gifts, your talents, your prayers, and even your smiles. To pray first and to give. So I hope you've had some fun with that this past week, and guess what? You can keep doing that. So now we come to a new world vision. Pretty bold title for the last chapter of this book, and as I, I wondered, is Reverend Butterworth overselling it a bit? <laughs> I don't think so. Perhaps you are like me and you see your thoughts, words, and deeds going out into the world like a pebble thrown onto some water. Lots and lots of ripples. We toss the pebble and we can see some of the ripples, but not all of them. And we certainly can't see what is going on underneath the water. We just threw a pebble. Or perhaps we just put into manifestation or expression a new thought, word, or action that changed someone else's thought, word, or action, that changed one 
person's moment or day or life that changed the moment, day, or lives of several people that changed a neighborhood, that changed a state, that changed a country, that changed a world. Or we just threw a pebble. <laughs> Throughout the book, we have mainly dealt with two spiritual laws, the law of consciousness and the law of giving and receiving. It's sometimes called the law of compensation. The law of consciousness states that energy, energy flows where our consciousness or awareness goes. All right, how about this? Good morning. How about this? Good morning. <laughs> yeah. I said the same thing, right? But I had a different consciousness or different awareness, and you received it differently, except for the laughter. <laughs> so same words, but different consciousness, so obviously different energy. It sounds self-evident and simple. So why the big deal? Well, because we are always sending out energy. And if we are either not aware or not responsible, we could be throwing a toxic pebble into the water. We can choose instead to throw a loving pebble into the water. And perhaps that will benefit others. Those wonderful ripples will be loving ripples of water, gentle ripples into the universe. So what type of pebble do you desire to throw? Or actually, what type of pebble do you desire to be? And if your thoughts, words, and actions are prosperous, are grounded in the omnipresence of God's substance, if you are swimming in the water of God's substance, then that is the energy that goes forth and becomes a prosperous influence in the world. Unity teachings are often simple, but rarely easy, right? Reverend Butterworth writes that lack of any kind in human experience is the result of some sort of obstruction of the free flow of the creative process. You, you cannot begin to understand the prosperity laws until you are willing to accept this aspect, which means that you must take charge of your life, of your consciousness. Your consciousness has, at the very least, contributed to putting you in the place where you happen to be right now. So yes, there may be, and there usually is, some external forces at play, but you have played a contributing or a supporting role. And if that is true, then so is the other side of that, that you can play a contributing or supporting role in changing where you happen to be right now. Yippee! Yeah! So over these six weeks, you have been dealing with some very powerful teachings. And someone uh, once wrote, a mind once stretched by a new idea can never go back to its original dimensions. I think that calls for another yippee. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so all of us have been stretched these past six weeks, and all of us have been changed at depth, even if we're not yet fully aware. The gift of God has been stirred up in all of us. And now it is your mission to go stir up that gift of God in others. More and more people are coming to a deeper realization of what is truly important in their lives. As we become more deeply grounded in our spirituality, in knowing that God is centered in us and we are centered in God, then our consciousness grows. We change. Lives change. There is a universal process of growth that begins in each one of us as we live in the realization that we are the inlet and the outlet of the divine. The author asks, can you imagine what your life would be like if you could realize your full potential? Mm. If you could fully embrace that you are a spiritual being creating and having this physical or earthly experience. If you could really know that you could not fail, that you are worthy, and that the gift of you is the greatest gift that exists. Reverend Butterworth writes, just one person who changes their thoughts Becoming alive with the idea of the all-sufficiency of God, substance, and staking their claim for prosperity and success in the world, not only begins to experience abundance in their own life, but also becomes a powerful influence for prosperity in the world. You might even say that they possess a new world vision. We might even claim that we, each one of us, has a new world vision. That is, that is what I would like each of us to hold on to as we continue to grow and expand in consciousness and in giving, to know that we have and are part of a new world vision. So let's see what this diploma says. Because don't you want to know what it says before you come up and get it? <laughs> okay. Ooh, ooh. Feel like the town crier here. I know. Hear ye, hear ye. <laughs> Yeah. So it says, Unity of Greater Hartford certifies that this Unity Truth student has been conferred with a graduate diploma in spiritual economics on the 21st day of November 2021. This Truth student has been open and receptive to the teachings of, Eric, of Reverend Eric Butterworth in his book, Spiritual Economics. As this truth student goes forth, they agree to always strive to be aware that God is centered in them and they are centered in the divine. They will keep the high watch of truth by knowing that wherever they are and whatever their experience, they are an inlet and may become an outlet for the flow of God substance. They will take personal responsibility for a great new world vision as they affirm the kingdom of God is within all people. They understand that they are an unborn possibility of limitless good and theirs is the privilege and the responsibility of giving birth to it. Their motto is think substance, think prosperity, think plenty for all. Unity of Greater Hartford. So, if you would like to continue this study of spiritual economics in your life, 
and in your spiritual journey. Oh, you guys are too funny. They, <laughs> they brought their graduation caps. Oh, my God. There's, oh, my goodness. I love people who like to play. Uh, uh, well, in a moment, I'm going to ask you to stand up in a moment and move to the middle aisle and come forward so Lee and Wendy can hand you your diploma and then return to your seat. Now, we're just going to have one line in the middle of the aisle so there's room for people to return in the middle aisle back to their seats. And as we do this, Carolyn will add her gift of music. And perhaps you might even be encouraged to dance up, up the aisle. I know Lois will be dancing. Uh, or at least <laughs> clap your hands, making a joyful noise. So please um, come forward to a, a, you know, form that middle aisle uh, queue. Um, so please do that now. And Carolyn, we'd like a little diploma music, please. <laughs> No stopping us now. We're on the move. Ain't no stopping us now. We got the groove. There's been so many things that held us down. But now it looks like things are finally coming around. Yeah, I know we got a long, long way to go. And where we'll end up. I don't know, but we let nothing hold us back. We're gonna get ourselves together. We're polishing the act, yeah. Oh my goodness, ain't no stopping us now. We got the groove. Ain't no stopping us now. We're on the move. If you've ever been held down before, I know that you refuse to be held down anymore. Don't you let nothing, nothing stand in your way. I want you all to listen, listen to every word I say. Ain't no stopping us now. We're on the move. Stopping us now, we've got the groove. Ain't no stopping us now, we're on the move. Ain't no stopping us now, we got the groove. Ain't no stopping us now, we're on the move. No stopping us now. We've got the groove. <laughs> the but God has other plans. Hey, God has other plans. The piano we God. We enjoyed every bit of it. <laughs> thank you, Carolyn, and certainly thank you, Lee, Wendy, and all of our graduates. Um, give yourselves a nice big round of applause. So I'm going to leave you with this final word from Reverend Butterworth, and he quotes Canon Farrar, and he writes, I am only one, but I am one. I can't do everything, but I can do something. What I can do, I ought to do. Do by the grace of God, I will do. This week and into a new year of 2022, imprisoned splendor and catch a new world vision to be birthed by you. Namaste.
Thank you, Reverend Christine. You know, I see so many instances of children that are featured and they'll grab all their pennies and they'll encourage and before you know it, they have a thousand dollars and I'm going, these little kids can do it, we can do it too, right? Let's get the spiritual economics all around the world. Thank you, thank you. Please, if you'd be so kind, join me in our prayer of protection. Together, the light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Carolyn, if you would now be kind enough to sing the Unity Peace Song for us while we listen, and then we will gather together to give the Gandhi blessing, followed by a final song by you. Miss Carolyn, take it away. Thank you. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. With God as creator, family all are we. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my joyous vow. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. The voice of an angel, I tell you. The voice of an angel. So we're going to do the Gandhi blessing, and as you know, it's a call and response. So we're going to do that today, but I also would encourage you to stand up if you're able. And so as you say the response line, take some time to look at others in the sanctuary. I offer you peace. I offer you love. I offer you friendship. I see your beauty. I hear your needs. Our wisdom flows from the highest source. And I salute that source in you. I want to thank everyone who um, uh, helped create this wonderful service today, uh, especially our prayer chaplains. Uh, and we have two that are going to be uh, in the sanctuary after the service who would be delighted to do one-on-one -on -one prayer with you in, in uh, privacy. And that is Jolene and Wendy. If you two would just stand up so they know who you are. There we go. Uh, thank you so much, and of course, thank you to all the prayer chaplains who have been holding us in sacred space and in prayer this morning. Um, and if you do would like to um, stay and pray with Wendy and or Jolene, it's real easy. All you need to do is go up and say, "Would you pray with me?" And they would be delighted to do that. They'll take it from there. If you would instead, uh, or in addition to, like to put a prayer request in the prayer box that's in the back of the sanctuary. There should be a form right in, uh, in, in front of you in the pew, and Wendy's holding it up. <laughs> you can just fill it out and put it in that prayer box, and you'll be held in prayer uh, for 30 days, and then after that, your prayer will go to silent unity, and they will hold your prayer for, for 30 days. Uh, and um, 
And if you're not in the sanctuary and would and have a prayer request, just send us an email. Send it to prayer request at unityhartford.org and that will go to the prayer chaplains and in complete confidence, but deeply honored, they will be delighted to pray with you. And so there are many individuals who did help with today's service. Uh, thank you to all of you, our worship assistant, uh, 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 Deborah Wilson, our live stream team, Marty Espinola, Angela Simidon, and Tony Bensko, our, our greeters, uh, Lois and Maria, our coffee baristas, uh, we had several, uh, Marty and Christine and Wendy. Um, and if you would like to... Uh, be in service on Sunday or part of a, a, live, a part of the team where you can help out, even if it's um, you only attend online, uh, then there is something that you can help with. We would be delighted to have you in service with us. Just send me an email, revchris at unityhartford.org, and we'll talk and find the right and perfect place for you to uh, participate. Um, and so, oh, well, and this, I think it's starting to happen. Our church doors, as you know, open at 9.30 a.m., so please come early and hang out in the community room, and, uh, and you can, there are other people that are early birds and would like to just sit and have a cup of coffee, or you can help set up things for, um, for fellowship after the service. And so, of course, after today, we have some graduation cake, so... Make sure you come in the community room and, uh, and help us eat some of that cake. Uh, <laughs> and finally, many thanks to our wonderful music director, Ms. Carolyn. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. And what is our closing song today? <clears throat> so, um, well, the closing song is all about the New World Vision, and it is Imagine. Let me get that just a little closer. Okay. Oh, that's... It had a mind of its own. It started chasing me. Okay. New World Vision. Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try No hell below us Above us only sky Imagine all the people Living for today Imagine there's no countries It isn't hard to do Nothing to kill or die for And no religion to Imagine all the people Someday you'll join us And the world will be as one Imagine no possessions I wonder if you can No need for greed or hunger A brotherhood of men Imagine all the people Sharing all the world you owe. You may say I'm a dreamer 
the only one I hope someday you'll join us and the world will live as one thank you <clears throat> Thank you so very much. Thank you for joining us here today, both in person and online. We see you. We love you. We appreciate you. And I'm losing my voice. <laughs> um, and if you're here in the sanctuary, don't forget to join us after service for a graduation cake in the community room and coffee, I hope. <laughs> we hope you will join us at the Wednesday evening's meditation service this week because we will put into action the power of elimination with a dissolving bowl service. And yes, you can participate even at home. Uh, join us in the sanctuary beginning at 6.30 p.m. That's on Wednesday for the meditation and dissolving bowl service at 7 p.m. live or on Facebook. And we'll see you then. And happy, happy Thanksgiving. And I'll see you soon. <laughs>